So, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Kevin Silva. I'm the current president of Opticians Association of Massachusetts. I've been on uh, the OAM board now for about uh, seven years, and I just became president uh, this past November. And I'm here with my buddy Bob. Thank you, Kevin. Um, my name is Bob Alexander. I'm the vice president of the Opticians Association of Ohio. I've been with the Ohio board um, about six, seven years myself. Um, and uh, so Kevin and I have uh, uh, no slides for you today. That's right. So we are... Um, we're going to talk about um, a board meeting um, and how to make it um, maybe not so boring. Boring, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Kevin, why don't you go ahead and you mind starting? Yeah, sure. So, so um, thanks everybody for coming. So, like like Bob mentioned, we want to try to make uh, um, board meetings in these COVID times uh, not so boring. Boring, and how you could be a little bit more organized when you're having a board meeting, how to set it up and all that. But before we get started, uh, we want to get to know you guys in the audience. We want to um, ask you a couple of questions. So um, if we can put up uh, poll uh, number one, the new poll number one that we're going to be starting with, please. Um, and that's pretty straightforward. Um, what's your goal today? Um, um, have you conducted a virtual board meeting in the past? Um, have you not conducted one, but you plan on moving to virtual board meetings um, or implementing virtual board meetings? Or are you here just to gain some knowledge um, as we uh, move forward? So what about you, Bob? Uh, Have you conducted uh, virtual board meetings before all this COVID stuff? You know, we, um, so this would probably be a good time to talk about maybe the different ways our associations uh, meaning your association in Massachusetts and sure. um, our association in Ohio, right? Mm -hmm. Really switched from what we used to do before COVID and the pandemic started to what we currently do now. And in Ohio, we had uh, several meetings per year and only uh, part of those were um, uh, live. Mm -hmm. And so we were accustomed to using um, a conference call mm -hmm. for several of our board meetings. And so it wasn't as, as maybe a harsh of a switch mm -hmm. um, as, as others. And I think uh, your example is probably um, a more extreme switch than, than what we had. And I'll let you talk about that in just a minute. Yeah, so let's, but, um, let's, let's take a look at what these polls uh, brought in so far. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I agree. Uh, it was a little bit of a funny switch for us in Massachusetts. Yeah. So. so, you know, we were accustomed to not seeing folks um, at every board meeting. Um, however, using a different platform was a little bit of a challenge. So our challenges might be a little, might have been a little bit or probably were a little bit different than, than some others um, who were uh, strictly face to face uh -huh. in every board meeting. Uh -huh. So it looks like our audience um, has conducted some board meetings, 62%. Um, about 10% have not conducted any virtual uh, board meetings yet. And then some people are just here to gain a little bit more information. Um, before we move into some of the other differences between the two states, um, I think I want to ask the audience just a couple more questions here. Um, can we put up poll number two? Are you currently on your state board? So again, just wanna to try to gauge the audience here a little bit. Are you currently on your state board? We just trying to see if how involved the audience is. Is this new to, to you guys? Based on the first question, it seems like some of you guys might have some experience. State, state association, thank you for clarifying there. Okay, we can uh, end the, the poll here. It's about 70-30. It's okay. good. What do you think? You wanna, should we throw up one more? Um, that second, yeah, the next one might be good, 
good as we we construct how we're going to move through Sounds good. the talk today. Yeah. And do you have any experience in planning or conducting virtual or in-person board meetings? So we know that you guys have some experience with uh, virtual platforms, but. Do you have any experience in conducting uh, your state association board meetings? That should be a good amount of time there for that poll. Overwhelming, yes, yeah, good. Cool. That's great. We have some experience in the crowd. Good. So yeah, uh, like you mentioned, Bob, um, in Massachusetts, we were always uh, uh, in-person um, uh, association uh, board of directors meeting. We, uh, for many years, were doing it at a hotel. We rented one of the rooms uh, in the hotel and we got dinner for everybody. Uh, we, we got chicken that we quoted, OAM chicken, <laughs> everybody's favorite. And, um, and we, we were doing it like that. Uh, actually, in the, the past maybe year before COVID, we started, we actually moved to a restaurant. We got a function room at a restaurant uh, and we were doing it there. And same thing, we had dinner. It was always in person. Um, we did it as centrally in Massachusetts um, that, that we could uh, for everybody. And we would do it from 7 to 10 p.m. on a Tuesday, I believe. And uh, it was, uh, that was the norm. And then COVID comes, right? And we uh, have to come up with, with something new. So COVID hit, uh, we quickly realized that we weren't going to be able to uh, meet in person and that um, obviously there was still work to do. We had a, uh, so March of last year, we were going into our spring education meeting. Um, so we had just begun some of the planning for, for that. Um, we had a date set, which I think was going to be April. Um, of 2020 for our spring education meeting. So we had work to do as a board. Um, and uh, as everything progressed, we realized that there was no meeting in person. That was gonna happen, obviously. So um, Massachusetts locked down pretty quickly. Um, and uh, we decided to go with um, Zoom as a platform uh, during the transition. And we picked Zoom uh, basically because Zoom was quickly becoming the sort of household name that people were, were sure. getting comfortable with uh, for, for video conferencing. Um, you know, I, and you guys feel free, uh, the audience, feel free to throw it in the chat if you use anything besides Zoom. We had looked at like Microsoft Teams, um, Google Meet, uh, WebEx, and a couple of other ones. So if, anything, if anybody uses anything besides Zoom, um, feel free to throw it in the chat. Or if you guys have questions for us, uh, there's a Q&A section too. So feel free to use that as we go through our presentation today. But um, so yeah, Zoom was um, the big one. And uh, we, we realized that the learning curve uh, for the board really was, was uh, dependent on how comfortable people were with uh, technology. And so um, there was a little bit of a learning curve, but it wasn't too bad. Um, you mentioned that you guys were already doing um, some sort of virtual or telephone communication with your board. Is that right? Yeah. So we were using uh, basically the good old fashioned uh, conference call. Right. And um, so, again, we were accustomed to talking and meeting through and talking even uh uh, finishing up planning our education meetings and 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 whatnot without seeing each other uh, face to face. Now, we did have to make that transition from, um, uh, you know, a conference call to Zoom, um, and we didn't. I guess we didn't have to do that, but because we were using the conference call, but it was nice to be able to see people's faces, right? So mm -hmm. we could meet virtually. And there was a learning curve there, as you mentioned, um, uh, you know, depending on the, the level of comfort with the technology, um, have you, some people were using it all the time at work, right? So they were yeah. very familiar with it just being at work, um, uh, even though work was in their home. Mm -hmm. 
and so we also chose to use Zoom. Uh, there were a couple of uh, reasons, uh, as you mentioned, the popularity of Zoom, the, um, the the ease of access, the the cost was a was a big one for us. Yeah. Um, you know, I we at that time we were using a couple of different platforms that I was familiar with at work, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the uh, the just the level of um, functionality within zoom without having a bunch of different add-ons and, and and big learning curve made it really easy for us to make the decision to go with with zoom as well and and that's why i i think your question um if anybody's um ha uh, put in the in there about using a different platform uh, mm -hmm. i'd like to hear um, yeah so it seems like some of the audience has used uh things zoom seems to be pretty popular. Having meetings virtually is a, is a necessity. I saw somebody say they use WebEx. We looked at WebEx. Um, I think we just uh, sort of decided on a more what people were already using. Um, sort of Zoom quickly became like the Kleenex or the right the the Coca-Cola video conferencing very fast. Yeah. Maybe by mistake, you know, who knows? You know, they, they were the lucky ones out of the bunch, I think. But um, I see how, a Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, I see a couple of questions here in the Q&A. Mm -hmm. um, one see. is, is there an add on for Zoom for the polling questions? And um, the other one is getting opticians involved that are not tech friendly. Mm -hmm. And um, I can kind of go through both of those answers really sure. with one explanation, I think. So in, in Zoom webinar, there's a function called uh, that for polling questions. So it's, it's a different tool than Zoom meetings. Mm -hmm. So Zoom meetings and Zoom webinar are both put out by the same vendor, but they're two different platforms. And what we're using today is a Zoom webinar. And that's what you typically would use for a large uh, CE meeting or, um, uh, you know, education meeting, however you term it. Uh, so Zoom webinar is uh, a a very robust tool for being able to do the presentations um, adding in co-hosts and let them use their computer as the main computer and it gives you a lot more functionality um, for that presentation type setting and um, the uh, just getting the opticians accustomed um, just setting up practice webinars we so uh, we have a, a meeting here in Ohio coming up next weekend that, that is a hybrid meeting and it is um, going to be both uh, live attendees and Zoom attendees. And Thursday evening, uh, we took everyone who had um, registered so far and we sent that email list a, uh, an invite mm -hmm. and they participated in a practice session and they seen how everything's going to work. Um, if they're accustomed to Zoom meetings, they're typically very uh, comfortable with the turning the camera on and off, the audio on and off. With Zoom webinar, um, those are all turned off and they don't have the access to turn them on. So we have to teach them that they're not, their camera isn't going to work, their audio isn't going to work, um, how to use the Q&A, what the chat function is for, and then we have a couple of other things that are specific to how we run our meetings, um, mm -hmm. but we, and we go through that. So that's how we get them accustomed to uh, the, the technology and the platform. Yeah, um, we, we definitely, we looked, we used Zoom webinar for our two virtual education meetings, and it's a great add-on to your, um, to the Zoom uh, account that uh, your state association might have. And it ba like, like Bob mentioned, just to sort of piggyback off that, it basically puts the, attendees in the, like a view only mode um, where uh, the people speaking um, have control of video and audio and then there's the host and the co-host so great feature um, Bob did you notice when you guys um, sort of fully transitioned um, any uh, advantages or disadvantages to how committees on your board worked because I know for Massachusetts um, I'm, I'm part of the communication committee and we uh, always found it difficult to have regular meetings just because it wasn't the norm, uh, I think, for us to have virtual meetings. And so we went from having meetings like we try to carve out time at our board meetings for yeah. the committees to meet, yeah. right? And yeah. it, we went from like 
once every three months, once every four months. Now we're having meetings all the time. I, I like our communication meets all the time. Now our communication committee meets all the time now. And it's just really in a good and a bad way has made it a uh, very easy in a bad way. You can't really run away from the meetings anymore. <laughs> or you can't have an excuse. Right. So what about uh, yeah. you guys over there? So, yeah. So we, we found, I think uh, you put it uh, very politically correct. We found the same double edged sword that you found. Yeah. <laughs> so we have our meetings used to be, um, you know, sometimes once a quarter, uh, maybe we would have five or six meetings in a year. Uh, where and that's just that's just where everyone the board is together and not specifically talking about the committees having their their meetings together you know right and now what we're doing is um, we're we're meeting as a an entire board um at least once a month if not twice a month and those wow. calls might be a half an hour just yeah. to give and we just get an update like the committees are meeting by themselves but now everybody, we, we may just have this meeting where it's maybe 30 minutes and everyone gets an update with that, that everybody else is doing and mm -hmm. the communication um, has opened up greatly. Uh, yeah. I, I, it's not, and again, it's not that we couldn't have done it before with a conference call, but it's, it's just become more commonplace now that we've, we were thrown into this situation. And I think it's really fortunate. It's one of the fortunate things that came out of this, this pandemic Yeah, is that we have a new way to communicate, an easy way to communicate. Mm -hmm. And it's opened up so many options for us in Ohio, not only the way we conduct our board meetings, but the way we actually conduct our, con our, our continuing education meetings. Um, things that we never thought we would ever do. Um, we're like, Hey, this is easy stuff. Now we can make this happen. So yes, we're meeting more often and no, you yeah. can't run from them. And no, you can't run. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I couldn't agree more. It's become like common. Everybody has access to zoom now, I feel like. Right. And so it's just where before, <clears throat> It's like, you know, I don't know how to use this. I don't know how to use that. I, what am I, do I do it on a phone? Do I do it on a computer? So now um, it's sort of, it's forced its way into, into the majority of our board's uh, life, whether it's through work, whether it's through our board or, um, you, know, uh, you know, just friends and family. I, I right. feel like people are using it for that as well. So I see we have a question <laughs> from... Um... Arlen, let me yeah. to grab that. You sure. Know, have, have you seen it? I did. Just, yeah. Okay. Do you? Um, so the question is, do you use any survey software to record votes? Found that taking votes using the old fashioned yay or nay is more difficult, but don't have a good system. Um, so, uh, yeah. And actually, um, I think we, we were going to plan on talking about this in a little bit, but we can jump right into it now. So <clears throat> when we have our, our board meetings, we record the board meetings and we have our secretary sort of um, take the votes. You know, we follow uh, Robert's rules here in Massachusetts as much as we can, transitioning from in-person meetings uh, to, to virtual. Um, so we have the formal voting on motions that come up um, and, and all that that I'm sure the majority of the audience who's involved in their board is familiar with. And... Um, it was a little bit of a challenge in the beginning. So, but uh, we've, um, with the recording, and then we sort of slow it down as much as we can when people vote um, yay or nay. Uh, we also try to encourage uh, people to either raise their hand. Um, so feel free, you guys, to raise your hand. There should be like a little button at the bottom there. Show me you know how to use the, the hand raise feature um, so I can see. And uh, so we, we have people raise their hands like you guys are doing here. I can see the hands going up um, and whenever possible. So either some sort of um, reaction, I think uh, Zoom calls it, or hand raising. Uh, we record um, the meeting and we have our secretary uh, there uh, recording any votes. Um, we don't have a formal sort of survey software that we use uh, at the moment. Uh, do you guys do anything different, Bob? Well, we, we, 
So during our meetings for voting on a motion or to carry the motion, you know, we, we do the same that, that you're doing. We record our meetings and that way we can go back and, and, and find that information should we need it. Um, we open the voting, uh, someone will make a motion, somebody makes a second, you know, and we're all there, we're, we all have the video on and we, you know, we can, you know, I make a motion, you know, and it's recorded by the secretary just as, as we would be in a, in a live meeting. Mm -hmm. Now, what we have done, uh, what, what might be uh, a feasible option is that we've also purchased um, a, a subscription to SurveyMonkey. Oh, and yeah. We use this platform for building a form in our CE meetings. Uh -huh. So we use that um, as a uh, as a way to formally record all of our attendance for each hour of education the, to send out um, uh, their certificates. There's a lot of functionality with uh, functionality within that, and uh -huh. um, so you could use that. But I do believe. You can use a, um, a survey question within. Are there survey questions within Zoom meetings or only in webinar? Zoom I, webinar. Um, like the polling questions? Well, I or think the, there's the also survey. Yeah, survey. I believe that it is in webinar. It's only in Zoom webinar. So I if your your association so. has Zoom webinar and you would use that for one of mm -hmm. your meetings, you would have to physically go and you know make sure that everyone's audio is turned on. You would have to do those settings when you set the meeting up. It would take mm -hmm. a little more work. But there is a there is a function in Zoom webinar for for surveys if you in it, it survey uh excuse me zoom does a really good job of tracking attendance when people log in when they log yeah. out taking uh the the data that's recorded from polling questions the surveys so there's a few different options that you could use for that so we actually have a, another question that um I'll, I'll start off answering this one. Would using the polling feature be acceptable for votes? I would say uh, absolutely it would be acceptable for voting. If you haven't used the polling feature in Zoom, um, like Bob was sort of mentioning <clears throat> already, the polling feature is great because if you prepare ahead of time, you can poll um, if you know that you're going to vote on things. Um, so if you know that there's going to be some sort of vote that's going to come up, somebody already brought it up, and uh, you know it, it's gonna need a vote, you can create a poll. And Zoom does an excellent job uh, recording the analytics from that poll. Who voted what? And it, it dumps all the data once, uh, once the meeting is over. The issue with polling is if something comes up during the meeting, if somebody makes a motion live during the meeting um, that needs to be voted on, that poll won't be uh, created already. You can create polls on the fly. Um, but some you would probably need somebody dedicated on your team to do that. And then so we found um, when that sort of thing comes up, we use the hand raise feature like we like we just uh, mentioned. What do you think? Yeah, and that's that's the drawback to using the uh, survey platform or yeah. the recording platform within web, uh, Zoom webinar or mm -hmm. Zoom meetings is that if something comes up on the fly, you really have to have someone who's dedicated to listening for that for that then they have to have at you know a uh, host function mm -hmm. in order to do that so you have to there's a lot of planning that goes into that it's not that it wouldn't work but it would take a little more planning to do that so we got we have some more questions coming in i love it uh, yeah, this, this is, is great this is great i see i see one question from gary hi gary um in the chat and he asks who has a copy of the recording um so uh, I, I'm assuming the recording of, of our board meeting. So in Massachusetts, we have um, a uh, laptop that OAM uh, keeps and we, we keep uh, the recordings on there. We also have a YouTube account um, that uh, we set private videos for. So nobody has access. They're not listed. You can only access it um, uh from your own account and it's locked uh, as a backup. So if anything were to ever happen to uh, that uh, copy on the laptop, it is recorded um, and uploaded on YouTube um, for us to privately have access to. And we could download it from there as well if we ever need to. So what about you guys? We, we don't use uh, uh, YouTube, but the, the Zoom platform does offer yeah. uh, a cloud-based recording 
uh, storage. So you can keep the recordings for all of your meetings right into Zoom cloud storage as well. So there's a few different options there. Uh, so I think as we're going through these, just having um, some explanation of just the different options, right? There are many different options that whatever suits you best. Uh -huh. um, you know, like we're, we just have it, it's in our cloud. So uh -huh. the Zoom is, the Zoom meeting is recorded into the cloud. And, yeah. and if we need it, we can go, we can go get it from there. Yeah, we actually do that too. I think, I believe we automatically record there. So yeah. uh, we're, and then we download it. I think we just, we're afraid we have backups of backups like you were talking about yeah. earlier, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, no, keep the questions coming. These are great. We have a couple of more here. Yeah, um, a couple of in the Q&A. Um, one, have you had problems with people leaving before the meeting was over? So, um, I have, we, we have not, um, mm -hmm. I'm not, um, I'm not sure how actually we would, um, would handle that. Um, the only, the only time we have had folks leaving before the meeting was over was, uh, it were, it were instances where they let us know that they weren't going to be uh, attending the entire meeting before the meeting started. Mm -hmm. So um, this might go, uh, I know one of the points that we wanted to talk about, Kevin, was um, sending out an agenda ahead of yeah. time. And this really goes into um, a, a proper planning mm -hmm. and uh, uh, sticking to the, uh, the, the agenda that was prepared. And when you do this ahead of time, the the folks that might not be able to stay on the the meeting for the 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 entire time that gives them a chance to contact us whoever is is hosting the meeting if it happened you know just because of our busy schedules it's not always you know Shirley or myself or John it's you know it's, it's you know a different people so it gives them the ability to contact us and say, look, I've got something going on. You've got me scheduled at the later part of the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, it would be much better if I could go first or mm -hmm. earlier. Um, and then we, you know, have you contacted the other person to see if it's okay to switch with them? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and making sure that the, the people that need to be there, um, that we're making some accommodations for them mm -hmm. uh, in that manner. Now, now just dropping off and leaving with no explanation, um, you know, things come up, family, whatever. Um, we're, I'm sure that that's uh, going to happen from here and there. But um, I, we normally have that handled with a, with a good agenda uh, yeah. prior to. Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't know that we have too much issue with people just sort of like leaving um, <clears throat> um, or dropping off. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it happens, um, but uh, absolutely. The agenda is great. We, we try to get the agenda out um, before the meeting starts. And during the meeting, um, I'll typically do a screen share uh, and keep the agenda up on the screen uh, as we go through and um, talk as we talk about the items. Um, I, I try to create some sort of basic slide show for the agenda uh, with the talking points for each section. And I think it just helps uh, ease the board in knowing that we're, we're staying on time and that we're uh, respectful of people's times. I mean, board meetings, we noticed that, you know, when we were having in, them in person, they were three hours long plus the commute home. Uh, now we can typically do those two hours, a little bit less, you know, it's not, we're not doing dinner. We're not, there's not as much chit chat in between. So um, the agenda helps keep us on track. And yeah. the other thing is that we need, we, so our, um, our meetings have been flowing fairly well recently. We haven't had to have a moderator step in and say, we need to, we need to move on, mm -hmm. but there need to be somebody that's ready and willing to say, we need to move on. Right. And so as we're doing today, we have somebody that's going to come on and tell us we have 15 minutes left. You have 10 minutes left. You know, right. um, it's also good for you at your association when you have these board meetings to have that person who's dedicated to say, all right, it's we've allotted 20 minutes for this topic. Uh -huh. um, we've been into it 20 minutes. We haven't got anything really accomplished yet. Let's let's table that for now. Let's move on. Uh -huh. And or we're not really talking about that topic anymore. We need to, we need to reel it back in. Yeah. 
So um, not only do you need to have that agenda, and that's very important, there also needs to be somebody that's willing and able to, to step in and, and, and keep, keep, keep the meeting within the guardrails, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. Do you, do you, is that something you guys always had, even when you were um, doing like conference calls? Did you have something like that in place, yeah, or is that it, more now? Yeah, it was more in our um, our live meetings and um, when yeah. we were doing our conference calls. But I think now that it's this 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 platform has become so second nature that when you put the agenda out, there's an expectation that you I've allotted you 20 minutes. You need to stay to 20 minutes because everybody's busy. We're meeting more often. Mm-hmm. Um, we're trying to be very cognizant of the family time. Right. This is all volunteer work. Nobody's getting paid millions of dollars to do this. Right. Um, oh, you're not. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So there's a it seems that it's more commonplace that there's a, an attention that's paid yeah. to that to that agenda. If you just have someone to take 10 minutes, uh, Shirley does a really good job of just jotting down some ideas. She'll send it out to. Um, you know, the executive board and say, this is my understanding of what we're going to accomplish, yay or nay. Mm -hmm. And if we make any, and we, any adjustments to that, we agree on it. And then we send it out to the board and and they stick to it pretty, pretty regularly. That's good. Yeah. yeah, We haven't really utilized uh, uh, maybe a timekeeper uh, in Massachusetts, but, you know, sometimes I, I think that that could be used because, um, in, in, in person meetings, especially, I've noticed, I agree with you, I noticed that virtual meetings, there's not as much side conversation and, and distraction that happens in a, in a virtual meeting. Really, it's the focus is on the person presenting and all that. But yeah, And there's a, a, a question here about, do you have someone assigned to be a moderator or is it just whoever says something to move on? I think you really should have... Um, and then John, um, our president commented, the more meetings we have, the shorter they are and, yeah. and, he's, and, and the more productive actually. Mm-hmm. Um, in each, and in each one of those, it's usually like with us, it's generally me. If I'm on the meeting, I'm the moderator. I'll, I'll step in and say, I think we, it's time to, to move on. We need mm-hmm. to, you know, uh, but, but it needs to be a, an understanding of who that person is. Mm-hmm. So that if that person's not on your call, you need to assign someone else right. to do that. Um, <clears throat> do you, that sort of goes into things like, um, I, I think, etiquette of, of being on uh, a board meeting, a board, uh, um, a, a virtual call like this. Um, do you encourage um, your uh participants to mute when they're not being when they're not speaking and it's not their turn presenting or um do you encourage video on because i have some quick tips for the audience before we all leave today um but and i'm sort of hinting at them right now but what do you guys do there and yeah so um that that and that answers a a a comment that was put in the q a if you've seen that from from kurt that just simply says mute um sometimes I wonder why we still say you're on mute or you need to mute. Yes. We encourage everyone to um, keep their microphone off if they're not speaking just to be, uh, you know, it's the same. It's the, in that manner to me, Kevin, it's really the the exact same etiquette that you would have in a live meeting. Mm -hmm. You know, you wouldn't be talking if you're talking and addressing the board. I wouldn't be whispering to somebody sitting beside me. Right. Right. And so if I'm not on mute and, you know, the family's going on behind me and all that, it's it's a little disruptive. Uh If the family's going on behind me and we're having a meeting, it's my turn to talk then we put up with it. Right. Right. Because again, (laughs) what can you do? Right. What can you do? But just keeping yourself um, muted, quiet as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, same, same here. You know, we encourage muting if it's, if it's not your turn. We have, um, I would say a, a good size board in the 20, uh, 20 people range. And so, yeah, you can, you can imagine once people, uh, if there was side conversation or, or family, the dogs and everybody is unmuted, um, you definitely want somebody there to mute people <clears throat> if needed. Um, we also, I, I've, I, we've started to implement uh, encouraging our board to, if possible, to keep the video on. Um, um, I really, uh, and that's, that's one of my big tips, and I encourage you guys to bring this back to your state association. Um, 
we all have sort of seen um, or experienced what it's like if you're in a, in a meeting and everybody has their video off. Uh, you know, are people paying attention? Um, are people really listening? So uh, I've really started to encourage uh, video on at the board meetings. Uh, if we were in person, you wouldn't be able to hide, uh, right? We, we'd all yeah, be. Right. <laughs> and so, um, and it just makes for a, a better connection with your board. I feel like you get to know people. And otherwise, we could have done this on the telephone, right? So if we're going to be using Zoom and, and using it to its full uh, capability, I, I do encourage video on. Uh, and uh, my tip number two uh, for using a video is um, try to make your um, your webcam uh, somewhat eye level. Um, and yeah, there you go. <laughs> there it is, Bob. Um, right. And, you know, you don't want to be too high or too low and uh, have that webcam looking up for an hour anywhere that it shouldn't be looking. <laughs> So, and using a computer or a laptop, if possible, uh, is going to be a little bit better than the cell phone. So, um, of course, these aren't, uh, these aren't mandated. They're just recommendations for, for having a better experience. You know, we're all doing the Zoom stuff um, and everybody will have a better experience uh, if we're sort of eye level with the camera, not too high, not too low. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, any other tips? What do you, yeah, if, if you uh, see both Kevin and I are hardwired into our, our microphones, I'm actually, you know, Kevin's using his uh, earbuds. I'm using uh, an actual recording microphone that I use for work. Um, the, the best way to have an audio experience over a Zoom meeting um, is, John, I love your comment, is to not only wear pants, um, <laughs> it is to have uh, to hardwire yourself directly to the computer, whether you have headphones, um, you know, ear pods, something that goes in the ear, whatever that might be. The if you've ever noticed um, somebody talking and their lips are moving and the voice is coming after the 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 voice is coming across the computer. Um, that's a little bit of lag time between the com the microphone in your sp in your computer picking up the voice and then actually putting it into you know the, the video mm -hmm. whereas in if you're connected directly to the computer um, no matter what kind of microphone that is um, you get a real time um, a much better real time experience with just the logistics of the voice coming out of the uh, lips as they move. Yeah. Um, so ca the camera, the camera placement, um, just as simple uh, the, as putting a set of um, headphones in uh, mm -hmm. that you use when you talk on your cell phone yeah. um, can make a very, very big difference in the, not only the audio quality, but the experience itself. Yeah, I, I see here, uh, Gary put in the chat, um, uh, computer hardwired too. Uh, Gary, I, I couldn't agree more. And yes. uh, that actually is going to go into uh, another one of my tips about screen sharing. So um, <clears throat> so it's, it's and I said this uh, a little while back and some people in the audience didn't know what I was talking about, but the old fashioned connecting your computer to the internet with an ethernet cable um, and I have it here today, does give you the best uh, experience and the best speed. Wi-Fi is great for convenience of being mobile within your house. But if you're going to be presenting to your board and you're going to be sharing video or sharing um, something that could be a little demanding on your internet, um, being hardwired is going to give you that best experience. Um, and it's going to be the fastest experience to share Video. I know in Massachusetts, sometimes video or YouTube or something comes up, um, especially if we're talking about communication. And we want to show the video and we want people to see it the way it's supposed to be seen, not so choppy and uh, audio cutting out, video cutting out. And um, the second part of that, uh, of being hardwired, is when you screen share, the green button in Zoom to share your screen that I'm sure uh, we've, we've come accustomed to, is um, there's a little option before you select the screen you're gonna share. If you're gonna be sharing video or audio, on the bottom left of that screen, that pop-up that comes up, there's uh, an option to optimize for video and audio. And that, it will actually improve the streaming 
uh, if you are going to be sharing video to your board. So hardwired and optimize your screen share uh, for, for video. So. You, you, you know, the fact that you had folks that didn't know what hardwiring your internet meant yeah. means that we have, <laughs> means that we have great potential in the audience that we, that we have to at, at leadership this year. Right. I, I agree. Uh, right. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So we have that younger generation that's like, okay, what are you talking about? Wiring, mm. hardwiring my computer. Right. Um, so, <laughs> So uh, it looks like we have um, about uh, five minutes here. Let's see if we have any other questions. So it doesn't look like it, not yet. So Bob, I, I have a question for you. What, yes. do you. what do you think is is virtual conferencing with your board? Is this the new iPhone, the new, the new thing that's going to stay, right? Is this here to stay in some form or fashion? What do you think? Well, I'll answer then. You, then I need some opinion from you. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. I, I think it is. Yeah. Right. I, I think it is. Um, as as we've experienced um, in Ohio, we cannot wait to have in person board meetings again, mm -hmm. and have them on a regular basis. Yeah. But now we have a platform that allows us to, through experience, we now know that we can meet more often, we can be more productive, and we can be more efficient, and we can save the association dollars, yeah. right? And that's what it's all about. We, it, we're not here to just meet for the purpose of meeting, right? And when we do spend those dollars, we're very cognizant of what we're spending them on. It, you know, if we're going to go to a place, have dinner, or what the, the the chicken that you were talking about. Yeah, we, right? OAM chicken. The you can OAM, have some. You can if come. Have <laughs> OA, if we're going to have OAM chicken, um, you know, that meeting had had better be, you know, had better be as, a, as efficient and as productive as possible. Yeah. And not everybody can spend the time or take the time out of their day to go to that meeting and spend those hours driving there and back. This is going to give every association the ability to, form better committees, mm -hmm. have better uh, oversight into what those committees are actually doing. And it's going to help the leaders, the leaders that are on this call um, with their committees to get them the tools and the resources they need in a more timely fashion, because now we can, we can participate in their conference calls, their Zoom meetings, because we can just set a meeting, send it out in an invite, and we can all get on a call together. Yeah, you know, I I can't agree more. I mean, I don't see how, you know, this this COVID stuff has been crazy for everybody. And in a weird way, I think it's made us realize um, certain things. I think it's going to be difficult to going back to having only in-person meetings where you go till 10 o'clock at night and you have to drive an hour, an hour and a half to get home after working all day, right? You're not getting home till what, 11, 1130 at night and you have to get up and go to work the next day. So um, I don't see a way where we don't keep uh, virtual um, um, board meetings in some form or fashion here in Massachusetts. And I think that's quickly being realized uh, across the optical industry. Um, whether you're gonna be using the virtual meetings for just for board meetings or if you're gonna start to implement um, some sort of virtual education in your state, I definitely think that um, in some form or fashion, this is here to stay. Efficiency is huge. Like you mentioned with committees, mm -hmm. I've seen it in our committees. Um, we're more efficient. We're doing more. Um, and I know people have, a, you know, maybe our home a little bit more than they're used to, uh, used to be, but our committees are meeting more and we're, get, we're being more productive. Um, so yeah, I think it's here to stay. I agree. I agree. Couldn't agree more. I think we're about out of time. We have what, maybe one minute left. Is that yeah, it? Yeah, I think we it? have about one minute. And uh, so they're going to be putting up a slide with some um, instructions on how to get back to the main uh, general session. And we're going to put a link in the chat. Um, love that we can meet more often in the Zoom. I'm just reading any questions we have here. I'm meeting for relationship. Jennifer, I, you know, I agree that, you know, meeting in person still creates a, a great relationship. And I think that virtual meetings are great, but there is a bond uh, when you meet in person. And I think it's, it's going to be a mix of the two. So um, definitely. Thank you, Bob.
Thank you, Kevin. This has yeah. been this was great. Uh, I want to thank everybody that participated. Uh, the the we were hoping we you know we were saddened that we couldn't be there in person. Yeah, because we wanted to be. Uh, oh, there it goes. There <laughs> I don't goes. think I don't think we kick, they kicked us out, but so uh, um, but but you know we wanted to be very interactive and yeah. um uh and and follow what you wanted. So um, we're glad to have being able to answer your questions. Yeah, thank you everybody. We appreciate you attending this breakout. Uh, just follow the link in the chat to get back to the general session and uh, we'll see you soon, hopefully. Thanks again. Thank you.